Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending today's Training Tuesday webinar on Tilt Up Chemical Solutions. I am Heidi Reese uh, with Dayton Superior's Marketing Department for the training area, and I'm excited to be hosting these short, insightful trainings for you each week, and I hope that you have been enjoying them and gaining knowledge with our product experts. Just for some housekeeping, uh, we have muted everyone who has called in, uh, so there won't be any distractions, so you can be able to hear the presenter. But if you have any questions throughout the entire presentation, you are more than welcome to send those through the chat functionality in the Zoom. And at the end, we'll have a little mini question and answer session. Also, this presentation is being recorded in case you want to re-listen to it later or if you have someone that needs to, um, to hear it, you can forward it to them. And if they couldn't make it and they would benefit from it, it would be a great way to uh, give them the ability to listen to it later. So through today's topic of chemicals in the tilt-up market, we're going to be discussing the chemical solutions for tilt-up that include bond breakers, densifiers, grouts, repair mortars, and epoxies. We're going to look at their compatibilities and functions and how to choose the best one for your tilt project. And there's so much more. And I want to introduce our resident chemo chemical expert, Matthew Carter. Many of you know Matthew already um, since he's helped out so many uh, job site issues. He solved technical chemical issues and questions, but I'm going to brag about him anyway. So Matthew is active in many industry organizations and he serves as the 2021 Vice President of ACI KS Chapter, um, the 2020 ICRI, which is Great Plains Chapter President, and he's also a voting member for the ASTM C09 committees. So he's worked in the construction industry for over 20 years, both on-site as well as at the dealer and distributor level. Uh, he's fulfilled a lot of roles that include sales, managing a formal or excuse me, a form rental yard and rebar shop, as well, do, as well as doing operations management. Back in 2012, he began his career with Dayton Superior, joined our technical services team supporting the chemical division, and is such a plethora of knowledge when it comes to chemicals. So with that, Matthew, go ahead and, and select the next slide for me, and I'll just go over that this presentation is for training purposes only. If you have any needs of technical or safety data sheets, you can find those at DaytonSuperior.com. And with that, Matthew, go ahead. Wow, Heidi, thank you for the wonderful uh, introduction. So again, my name is Matthew Carter. We're going to kind of talk briefly about the tilt-up uh, chemical products and compatibilities. Um, I will say that it's going to be a very high-level conversation. We're going to try to cover this in about, I don't know, 20 minutes, uh, give or take. Uh, and we're just highlighting select products. Uh, but I will say that with Tilt-Up, you know, you get a lot of interest in the bracing and accessories. And, and when you start talking about the Tilt-Up chemicals, it's often a focus on the bond breakers. And we've done previous uh, presentations on the bond breakers. And we could talk about those for hours along with uh, the, the topics we're going to be bringing up. Uh, we can go very much in depth in them. So this is just a, you know, looking at the bond breakers, we're going to look at some of the compatibilities and what other products you might need on your site for a successful project. Again, we're going to touch on the bond breakers. We got several to select from. Um, you know, we're going to take a quick look at those and then look at their compatible curing products, uh, the when, where, and how of, of how to use those. Uh, you know, densifiers are a real popular product to be using on, on tilt projects. We're going to look at the ones that uh, we have compatibility with and we'll we, uh, we advocate for. Uh, looking at the grouts, repair mortars, and, and a special knot to epoxy products. And then we'll look at our resources finally. So Dayton Spear Bond Breakers. If you're not familiar, um, a lot of information out there on those. We have four bond breakers. Uh, the first one is the SureLift with Dye J6D. That is a solvent-based bond breaker. Uh, the water-based version is the SureLift J6WB, WB for the water base. Uh, we have another water base that has a fugitive dye in it, um, and that is the Maxi Tilt with dye. So we've got three standard ones that have been in the marketplace for, for decades, and a lot, a lot of good use out of them. Uh, with a lot of the changes in VOC restrictions uh, several years ago, uh, we've got we developed the SureLift J6LVOC. 
Um, and that is an exempt solvent bond breaker that's been used on hundreds of thousands, millions of square feet, uh, a lot of success with a very good product. The trick is, uh, you know, they get all the accolades, they get all the attention when you start talking about bond breakers, but how do you use, well, what other products work with them? So you start looking at compatibility between the products. Um, the, the conventional thinking is uh, solvent to solvent, water to water. So if I'm looking at a product line and saying, hey, what is compatible here? Or what can I use? Uh, there's a couple different options. So with the SureLift J6WB and the Maxi Tilt with the die, those are water-based products. And so you've got two options, two, two large options. There, so you can use a dissipating cure, uh, which is something that I'm going to apply, and it's going to be a short term over the life of the concrete, you know, somewhere between 30, 60 days. It's meant to break down, be fairly easily to remove at the completion, and you're done with it, right? Um, then you also have the option to use a cure and seal. Uh, cure and seals are leaving behind a topical acrylic film on that concrete, and they do a very good job of protecting that concrete, and often you're going to have these in place anywhere between one to three years, uh, and you are typically having to remove them, uh, a special, special process to remove them if you want to get them off that slab. Um, one of the benefits to a dissipating, it, you apply it, you do what you need to do, you lift it, and it's easy to clean. It's right there. Um, urine seals are, are pretty phenomenal, though, that you put them down, you have an acrylic that's going to protect your concrete from incidental spills, uh, damage, things like that, or, or incidental uh, crackings and things like that, you know, getting stains on your concrete. Um, and they are a physical barrier that does a very good job long term of keeping that bond breaker where it needs to be. So when we start looking at dissipating, uh, the bond breaker is a cure, is always a good option, and that's going to be listed on the technical data sheet. So you could use the SureLift J6WB and the Maxi Tilt uh, as its own curing membrane. And again, these are industry standard membrane forming cures that are sitting on top of the concrete. Um, an option to this would be the Clear Resin Cure J11W. That J11W is also formulated with a fugitive dye for ease of uh, ease of application or where it's been placed. Um, there is one or two little codicils with the J11. You want to be sure that it's placed. Uh, you want to make sure it's uh, been placed, it's gotten hard, and then it has not started to dissipate. And that is usually not a problem with tilt projects because you are curing your concrete. And then you got a few days to let it gain strength, and you've got to form it, and then you're applying your uh, bond breaker, then you're pouring your, your panels pretty quickly. Usually you don't have a huge expanse of time between, you know, slab pour and panel pour, but things do come up in the field, delays, weather, things like that. So that is something to kind of keep in mind. Um, very commonly used, very good products uh, between the dissipating cures. Uh, something we've seen a lot of is the cure and seals. Um, and we've got a lot to choose from, and you're probably wondering why the heck are there four different ones? And I'll say the first two meet the 309 ASCMC 309 standard. They are medium solids products. They're, they're good economical choices. Uh, they're going to be pretty similar on paper. I would point out though that the EF is is a Dayton term for earth friendly, and it was formulated to have the lowest possible VOCs for that type of product. So it's less than 100 grams per liter, which is acceptable in all parts of the country. Even if you are a water-based product, you might not be able to go into like South Coast air quality management, right? Southern California or certain parts of the country that have very restrictive VOC. Uh, so we have those two products. And then as you go into the Cure and Seal 1315 J22WB, that's a 25% solids. It is an ASTM C13 standard Cure and Seal. And if you want something that is a little bit higher in solids, but lower in VOC content, we have the 1315F. All of those products have been successfully used with tilt-up applications. And the nice thing is once you put those down, you have an acrylic, and there's no place for that bond breaker to go except for sitting right on top of there, right, uh, waiting for your panels to be poured on top of it. Um, so very good options there. Uh, all these products uh, work wonderful, uh, but as we get further along, you, you have a decision to make, and you kind of have to look long-term what function you're going to be doing with the company. J6D, uh, that's one of our most 
popular bomb breakers, is solvent based, easy to use, easy to spray down. It's got a red fugitive dye to it. Um, there is no dissipating cure that we would say to use with that other than the bond breaker itself. And it works very well with that. You can spray it down. The red fugitive dye lets you easily determine where it's been placed and where it hasn't been placed. Uh, and then you would come back later and apply your bond breaker coats on top of that. Um, I, the cure and seals are compatible with it though, and we have three to choose from. Again, on paper, the J20 UV and the J22 UV look very similar to one another, right? They're going to meet the ASTM C13 and seals. Biggest difference is, and you might notice the LV in the J20, that's for lower viscosity, uh, which means if you're in a colder environment, you know, or you're trying to pour in winter and everything kind of thickens up in colder weather, you can come back and use the J20 LV. Uh, to spray down, it's going to maintain its viscosity better in cooler temperatures. Uh, if your specs or requirements are calling out for a higher solids product, we have the J23. So you're going from 25% products up to a 30%. And finally, we've got the SureLift J6L VOC. And, and remember, this is uh, specially formulated for uh, very restrictive VOC, uh, VOC areas. Uh, Example being Colorado, um, in areas that have very strict VOC requirements, usually it's just a water-based product that can be used. Uh, a lot of people like solvents, though, because let's say I'm in cold or freezing conditions, I don't want to have a water-based product on a in freezing conditions with the with the possibility of a freezing or having problems. Um, and the solvents may lay down a little bit easier. They're going to dry a little bit faster, especially if you've got humidity concerns or, or temperatures like that. So solvents sometimes work a little better for the application, depending on the load. We developed the, the J6 LVOC. This product as it stands is only compatible with itself um, because the other standard solvents are not going to be available for use in that area. Uh, and this is also what they would call a, a hotter solvent. Um, so it is a little bit more aggressive than maybe a standard one, uh, and we would not want to see it used in conjunction with a water-based product or water-based cure, cure and seal. So that kind of gives you a, a quick highlight of, all right, we've got the bond breakers, and they can be used by themselves, but if you want to look at uh, different options or maybe something that's going to be down a little bit longer term, uh, we definitely have that for you. But as we move along, uh, a lot of construction, a lot of tilt is going into a fast track application. Um, I know that there's a, a number of scrub and densifiers out there, but we tend not to recommend those before the tilt application. Uh, we have tested and proven the uh, our Pentra Hard Densifier, which is a lithium-based densifier, to be used in conjunction with our bond breakers. Uh, we can get into a conversation another day between lithiums and sodiums and all the other fun densifiers, but the lithium is going to be a very easy to apply, very effective densifier to use on tilt application. Uh, we have a success story on the right-hand side where we had a fulfillment center uh, warehouse that specced it and has used it regularly where they hard trial the concrete, uh, they apply the lithium densifier, uh, the Pentra Hard, They'll follow that up with a cure. In this case, it was the uh, clear resin cure J11, um, or you could use the bond breaker itself as a cure. And then you let that sit, and then you come back and you form your panels, and then you spray down your bond breaker on top of it. And it's a very compatible, very easy to use system. And so when you are done constructing and picking your panels and everything's there, you clean the floor one time, and now uh, your secondary application doesn't need to happen because you already have a good densified floor. And you're going to see this a lot in warehouse applications, big box stores, manufacturing, especially on the fast track schedule that you, they've got now. One of the benefits to the Pinter Hard Densifier um, is the application method. It's very, very easy to apply. So after the hard trowel is down, you're going to spray the Pinter Hard to rejection. So I'm going to spread it across the floor. Uh, I'm going to get a few light puddles, and that's okay. That means I have put down a, as much as that concrete I can absorb, 
After a little bit, I'm going to come back with uh, either microfibers or soft brooms. I'm going to broom out any, any residual puddling or material on the surface. And once that's done, I can go back in with my, my curing, uh, curing product, put that on top of it, and it's ready to go. It's done. Very effective, very easy application. So we've got our tilt, uh, so we've got our structural slab. Uh, we've poured our panels. Uh, we've lifted our panels and, and they're starting to go into place. Well, they don't, uh, on the foundation side, they don't magically pour that foundation perfectly flat so these things can just sit there and they're done, right? Uh, so whenever you're setting tilt panels down, they're going on shim packs. And you can kind of see that on the bottom right over here. You've got shim packs and that way you can shoot a, shoot a grade, shoot a level, uh, put in as many shim packs as you need, uh, put everything in place, and now we're bracing it. So I have got load being transferred through this whole big panel, through these shim packs into the foundation. That's not a good long-term solution. So you need to come back through and grout underneath these panels so you have uh, adequate and uniform bearing across that entire panel, transferring load from the panels, from the roof, all the way down into uh, the foundation. The way you would do that is a non-shrink grout. Um, in this case, uh, we have 1107 and sure grip high performance that are often used. Um, these are what's called an ASTM C1107 non-shrink bearing grout. What that means is these products are engineered and formulated for use, so they have a slight positive expansion. When I say slight, it's less than like 0.1% in some cases. Very, very slight. But all it's trying to do is overcome any potential shrinkage. So if I was to take a, a job site mix of sand, uh, cement, and water and pour it, if I was to pour it underneath one of these panels, you're going to get shrinkage, right? It's going to shrink back a little bit. And that's the purpose of having a non-shrink bearing product. These, these grouts can be mixed at fluid, flowable, and dry pack consistency. What that means is fluid is kind of like a, a thin pancake batter, right? It's going to pour it, flow it, move, come come back up the other side very, very easily. Uh, our grouts can easily hit six, 7,000 or, or higher, uh, depending on the requirements in fluid consistency. Flowable is like a thick milkshake, maybe waffle batter consistency. And again, that can also be used to pour going across. And as you go into a flowable consistency, you get higher strengths because we're using a, water, a lower water cement ratio. And finally, we've got dry pack. And no one is going to be dry packing underneath these panels that are being set down. But if we're doing a stack panel, uh, and, and in this case, it's where I've got a panel on the foundation, then I'm putting one on top of it, so I'm doing multi-layer, there's no way to, it is not practical to go through and try to do a fluid or flowable grout. So what you'll often see in tilt that's being stacked and precast that's being stacked is that you've got uh, a contractor coming back through and using a bearing grout in a dry pack or plastic consistency, installing it between those panels to ensure that you've got adequate bearing being transferred. And then finally, mixing, right? These grouts, uh, most of these are going to be uh, pre bagged, right? So 50 pound bags are available in super sacks. And you can mix it from everything to, hey, I've got a very small application. Um, I just need to mix a little bit in a bucket. Uh, or by hand, or I can mix a full bag at a time. I can use a mortar mixer and mix multiple bags at a time. Or, hey, I've got a very large project. I need to do multiple panels as quickly as possible. You can get super sacks, put it into a ready mix truck on site, mix it on site, and then pour it out. So there's a lot of variability and, and a lot of needs that can be met by these products. So we, try, we go from grout and bearing and, and taking care of that to now my panel is standing up, it's supported, you know, now we're starting to look at the aesthetics or any damage or nicks or pullouts or any, anything that might have happened to that, um, to that panel. I'm going to call an architectural finish here. This is it, it kind of what it sounds like. It's just to make the panels look pretty, right? Uh, if I've got a few little imperfections, if I want to make it look a little bit nicer, if I've got, you know, that you can necessarily I get like rock pockets or consolidation issues and you just need to clean it up a little bit, Architectural Finish is a great product for that. 
It is a vertical product. It can be sanded. It can be painted later. It's a very easy product to work with. And its consistency is kind of like a silt. It's a very silty. It's not going to be very grainy at all. You can pull it down to nothing and build it up to about a half inch. Uh, what you see here, this picture is a, a curved wall uh, that went up in Ottawa. Um, in order to get that curved wall, they had to use wood, right? So they had to site create the wood, the bowed wood form. But when they picked it up, they had a, a few textures and a few patterns from that wood transfer, right? Things happen. And so they were able to go back through with architectural finish and clean this up and, and make it look more attractive. You can kind of see the guy going back through with maybe a sander kind of brow marks that may have been left behind. Very easy product to use, very friendly to work with. Oops, I've got a little bit of damage. I got a little something I need to fill in. I'm, I might have some pockets that need to be done. I've got a little patching that needs to be uh, accomplished. Uh, I would say Recrete 20 is one of our go-to products for that. It is a general purpose, vertical overhead putty consistency mortar. You'll see it can be used for vertical and overhead very easy. It is like a, a play doh uh, consistency putty. Uh, it can be used for light duty horizontal patching. Um, you, we're usually looking at a minimum thickness of about an eighth of an inch, um, and that's just because it's sanded. It's got sand in it um, with a maximum neat thickness of about two inches. Because it's a neat mortar, it's going to generate some heat. But more importantly, if I'm going vertical and I apply two in, two inch thick patch, gravity's going to want to pull that down a little bit, right? And so usually at, at something like that, we're either trying to extend it and or support it, more importantly. Uh, we do have an acrylic bonding agent. If you want to add a little extra bond to the, uh, to the substrate or if you want to give it a little bit more improved performance, you can add in the acrylic bonding agent. And if you're trying to match a little bit more aesthetically, um, we've got a Recrete 20 minute light version. Uh, so Recrete 20 is a standard kind of concrete gray, but we have a lighter version available. Uh, that way you can kind of match what you might have on site a little bit easier. I'm going to give an honorable mention to epoxy products. Uh, you don't always see those spec'd out or called for as, as much, but uh, things happen on the job site, right? Oops, we need some rebar installed here. Uh, we need something installed there. Oh no, when we picked that panel, maybe a moment or something happened or, or flexing occurred where we got maybe a crack. And at that point, we've got a licensed design professional usually involved at that time saying, hey, um, we will want to inject this. We will not want to inject it. So I would say it's always good to have available the Propoxy 300 Fast, which is also uh, Sure Anchor J51. Uh, that is a gel-based anchoring epoxy. Um, it is a type 1, 2, 4, and 5. For those who know, it's an ASTM C881 designation, and that's just for epoxies in general, so you can kind of look and compare them across the board. And that's just saying it's good for fresh to harden and harden to harden concrete and structural and non-structural applications. Very, very good product there. It's a gel, so I place it on a vertical surface. It's not going to run down on me. That's going to be very important because if I am doing an injection, I've got a very low viscosity product I'm trying to put inside of a concrete member, and I don't want it to escape. And so when you go to do an injection, you have to have something to set the ports to inject the epoxy, but you also have a cap seal. So the 300 Fast, the 51, very good product to have on hand for that. Or doing an injection, uh, the Propoxy 50 is a very, very good option. Again, it's a type 1, 2, 4, and 5. Uh, so it is good for structural and non-structural applications and fresh to, fresh to hardened concrete and hardened to hardened concrete. And then it's a grade one, which is low viscosity. In this case, it's approximately 250 centipoys. Uh, water being one, um, I think honey is around 10,000. Um, it's a very, very low. So think of it as like a, a lightweight motor oil, um, somewhere in that neighborhood. Use this one as a gravity feed or injection. Quick overview of how that's used if you have a panel um, or, or a crack that you have to address. You know, you kind of grind it, make sure you got good adhesion back to the original concrete substrate. You're going to install your ports, and depending on the epoxy or the uh, epoxy or the injection method you're using, ports will vary. You can do a little hand injection, right? So I can get a cartridge and I can do a small one, 
by hand using a, a cartridge gun, or I can get a machine uh, out there, an epoxy injection machine, and have that done. Uh, those will usually take a separate size port, keep that in mind. Uh, spread your ports out, install them as necessary. Then you're going to come back and then you're going to fill in that crack. Uh, it's called a cap seal, and you're trying to encompass the, about a half inch to inch on either side. We just want it well bonded to, to withstand any injection pressure that might be there and to make sure we don't get any oozing. You kind of see it on the right hand side. The ports are installed, the cap seal is on there. And then if I'm doing a, a small hand application, I'm going to start from the bottom. Fill it up from the bottom all the way up to the top so I displace all the air. The question is, what do I use? Decisions, decisions, decisions. Um, it's always good to start with specifications. What are the requirements? Is there a spec book or an engineer, or architect, designer involved here? Um, are there ASTM, ACI standards involved? Uh, are we buying on price, performance, or what are we looking at? Uh, important one is final finishing and, and the VOC restrictions of the area. Uh, to kind of look at it a little bit more specifically, like on grouts, right? Um, do I need a prepackaged product or, or are there other options? Uh, what is the strength required? Do I can I get by with a, a good, uh, good grout like the 1107 Advantage grout, or do I need to step up and get a little bit stronger grout with a little bit higher in um, ultimate strength and maybe go to the Sure Grip High Performance grout? Um, what placement methods am I looking at? Am I dry packing the product? Am I doing a fluid installation, a flowable installation? And uh, for instance, the 1107 Advantage grout hits 10,000 psi on a dry pack consistency, but I can hit 10,000 with sure grip high performance in a flowable consistency, right? So it might be easier to flow it in versus having to dry pack it in, uh, given the opportunity. Uh, repair mortars, right? Is color and aesthetics an important one? Um, a lot of tills being left bare now, so you want to try to match it as closely as possible. If it's being painted, you got a lot more flexibility. Um, what is the strength requirement or the speed of strength, right? I want to do. I want to apply it, um, and then within two or three hours, I've got you know two, three thousand psi, and I can walk away from it. Or you know, do I want to form and pour it? Is it a little bit larger? Do I want to you know form it up and have a product I can pour into it? or am I going to do a hand application? So there's a lot of different options there. Um, on the epoxies, I'll say often there's a licensed design professional involved, um, you know, when it comes to anything too structural or too major. But otherwise, uh, if you are doing an injection, just note that on bare concrete, it, it's going to kind of show um, just because you are putting an epoxy and it's going to kind of highlight that crack. If you're painting it or, or doing anything else over it, you've got, a, again, a lot more flexibility. Um, bond breakers and cures, that one is going to depend heavily on the VOC restrictions of your region. Um, for those who don't know, there's like seven or eight different ones, uh, VOC restricted areas. Uh, just off the top of my head, you've got uh, OTC in the Northeast, you've got LADCO, which is around the Great Lakes, you've got parts of Maryland, DC, Virginia that kind of have their own special one. Uh, Colorado switched over about two years ago, and they've got a more restrictive VOC area. Uh, seven counties of Utah, you've got Northern California, which is CARB, and then you've got Southern California, which is South Coast Air Quality. I've left one off. I know Canada is a little different as well. So there, you always kind of have to take into account, I might be designing a project in the Midwest, but if, if I'm designing it here, but it's actually being installed, in you know Southern California, Colorado, or anywhere else. Well, no, we got to take that into account. Um, what is the final floor finish? Some warehouses like acrylics, or some production areas like acrylics, and they're okay with that. Some of them want a densified burnished floor finish, and then some of them are saying, hey, you know, this is going to be residential or office space. We're going to be putting down carpet, tile, VCT. I don't want to have anything down there, right? I, I want a clean, bare concrete to apply whatever glues, mastics, or, or grouts for a tile. So I need to be sure that I'm specking in the correct product to make sure I give my few other contractors or other trades the easiest possible time. Um, so a lot, a lot to take into, advantage, uh, into account there. Uh, I mentioned painting tilt up. Uh, I do want to put in a special note on that. Painting tilt-up is, is 
the responsibility of the painting contractor, not not ours, not Dayton Superior. So what happens is I've got my my tilt up down, right? I've I've poured my panel. I am curing my panel, and my panel sitting there for seven days to 28 days, right? When I go to pick that up, I have effectively cured that panel because I've got a curing membrane on the back and it's been face down on a panel. I'm going to be full of moisture. Um, on top of that, there may be a curing compound on the back. There might be a little residual bond breaker on the front. Uh, the TCA uh, recommends 28 days standing uh, or longer. Sunlight and exposure to the elements uh, helps dissipate any temporary cures that are on that product. Uh, makes it much easier to clean off. Uh, the TCA has very good guidelines for cleaning and paint um, for cleaning uh, panels prior to painting. In superior resources, um, the buckets, the bags don't always have all the information you ever want on there. Uh, we have technical data sheets for that. So on the right hand side, you'll see a technical data sheet, and it gives really good instruction on how to use the product. It's got uh, features, properties estimating guides, storage, and all that. It doesn't have every nuance that there is, though. And in, in the case of Bond Breakers and a few other products, we have what's called an application guide, dedicated source for that particular product. And they are readily available on our website. So if you go to our website, which is over here on the left-hand side, and you search, let's say, 1107 Advantage Grout, which is right here. So if I'm on, on the website, I could either use drop-down menus to get there, or I can search 1107 Advantage in the upper right-hand corner. It will pull up what's called a landing page. This landing page, and it's kind of hard to see here, but it's got a guide to grouts, which is just an overview. It's got the technical data sheet, safety data sheet, additional downloads, uh, related links, success stories, and any potential DOT approvals. But it's, it's a very rich area to get resources. Uh, and then kind of wrapping up here, uh, Dayton Superior, we offer liquids, powders, and epoxies. We've got one of the most complete lines in the industry coming out of one manufacturer. And you can call technical services. You can call your TSR. You can call your uh, dealer sales manager. We know how the products work with one another. We know the reaction. So. Uh, you don't get onto a job site and somebody's put one thing down and then you put something else and then who knows, you might have an issue. Um, you know, going with a single manufacturer on, on tilt projects is, is much, much easier than mixing and matching. Uh, we have a dedicated technical services line. You call that number, you're liable to get myself or my colleague Nathan. Uh, there's a really uh, handsome guy up here in the upper left-hand corner. That is me. My colleague, colleague is down here in the bottom right. Uh, we have dedicated dealer sales managers for regions. We have dedicated chemical technical sales managers for regions. And we also have precast and tilt uh, technical service reps. So we have a very good network of, of Dayton employed individuals in your area that can provide support. They can provide field support. I need somebody on site to look at this. You can up to your dealer sales manager, your TSR, and they can uh, make arrangements with you. You call, we do our best to make, uh, make give you a solution, give you answers as quickly as possible. And we have a very robust platform online. We've got people dedicated to getting specifications out there for you. I would say that this is the conclusion of my portion, um, and I would take you over to the uh, what Heidi will talk about with uh, the product deals for this month. Yeah, thank you, Matthew. So we're a little over time, so I'll just be real quick. If you uh, wouldn't mind, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat uh, functionality right now. We'll get a couple of them answered while I discuss what's going down right now. So the Tilt Up Convention is occurring in Denver, Colorado, starting today. Come see us at the booth 313, and you can talk to a lot of our uh, people that will be there, uh, the engineers and the ones um, who are dealing with the Tilt Up uh, technical services much like what Matthew is for the chemicals. Um, we have a superior deal happening. So many of the products that Matthew addressed in this presentation will be in the superior deal. So the Sure Lift with dye, the J6D, as well as the Cure and Seal 1315 J22WB, and finally the 1107 Advantage Grout are on special this month. 
In addition, we have some tilt-up accessories that we didn't go over, but uh, they are included from the accessory side. We have the whole bundled approach for you for tilt in the multi-use Bearcat bolt, both five and seven inch, um, the V66 Superior Slab Saver, and then actually Matthew talked about our P81 Superior Shim Packs um, that went underneath uh, to brace the system before you want to do the chemical version. We have all of that, so please contact your sales representative if you don't know who that is. Um, you can find them on DaytonSuperior.com, and there's a contact link at the top right, and they will help you out. So if there aren't any questions, I think that concludes today. Um, there is a contact information. If you want further training on the chemicals that Matthew spoke of and to, to more detail, please don't hesitate to use the training at DaytonSuperior.com, and we'll get that set up for you. So again, this has been recorded and I wanna thank all of you for joining in today. Uh, I'll let you know a little bit later on when it is available. You can see it on our YouTube channels and through the product video page on DaytonSuperior.com and can download for it and all that that I said early on. So thank you again for coming and everyone have a happy Tuesday. Bye now.